Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we are testing out Paul Rubens Artist Watercolors. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so today we are looking at this 24 pan set from Paul Rubens. Um, this was gifted to me from their distributor and I, I've tried their sketchbooks before, the Hot Press little mini sketchbooks, and I've absolutely loved them. So when they said we'd like to send you our paints to try out, I was like, heck yes. <laughs> and they also sent me their 50% cotton watercolor block, which I will be painting on, which I said heck yes too as well because I'd love to try out any and all of the things. Anyway, here's the tin. It is 24 pan set um, artist watercolors. So it did come with information, but unfortunately I don't speak the language. I believe it's in Chinese and I believe this is a Chinese company. Um, however, it does have the pink, the pigment numbers on the information. So if you are interested in what the pigment is so it like we'll say like p y 150 or whatever it is so you will know and on the little individual wrappers it does say the english name as well so you do have that and i'm sure you can do some research if you really want to research a little bit further into the quality but today we are just talking about first impressions and that's what we're going to do so first i had to take off all the wrappers pop them all out and then we are gonna get to testing. Okay, so as I swatch the colors, I'm just gonna tell you the color names. I did do a black line down the swatch card so I could see how opaque some of the colors were. Um, so the first color we have is Permanent Lemon Yellow. Then we have Cadmium Yellow Medium, Indian Yellow, Cadmium Light or Red Light, We have Scarlet, which is a nice deep red. We have Matter Red, which is kind of their pink. Then we have Violet, which reminds me of like a mauve color. Then we have Permanent Violet, which is like a dioxazine purple in my mind. I look at these colors and compare what do I have, what I have, <laughs> compare them what, to what I have. I can't speak. Then we have cobalt blue <laughs> and then we have their France ultramarine. Our next blue is sky blue, which is kind of like a cerulean. And then we have a sea blue. Then up at the top here, we have Prussian Blue. And then we have Payne's Gray. Yellow Green. Tree Green, which is like a sap green. Then Hooker's Green Bright, Brilliant. I don't know what that says. Brillite? I don't know. I don't know, guys. Um, then emerald green, then yellow ochre. Then we have, oh no, another one I can't pronounce. Pozul, mm, guys, I don't know, something red ochre. <laughs> then an umber, burnt sienna, a burned brown. And lastly, we have coal black. So apparently I can't pronounce some things. It's fine. You can always look it up as well, but those are the colors in the palette. Okay, so now let's not just swatch these paints, let's test them out. And here is the little Paul Rubens sketchbook that I love. I've been trying to practice some more landscapes. Landscapes are not my strong point. So I've been really trying to practice. That one was with gouache. But I love this little sketchbook. I have like six of them. Um, they're great for illustration, but they're really great for watercolor too, even though they're hot pressed. So just wanted to show you that quickly. And here is the Paul Rubens 50% cotton paper. It is a block 
which tends to be more expensive usually, um, but this was actually pretty well priced. So you can use a palette knife to open it. You just stick it in the little opening at the top and then slit down the sides, trying not to cut. I, I used to use scissors, which is not a good idea because then you can cut the paper. Don't do that. Um, so just find a palette knife or something. And then I, you don't have to tape it because it is a block. I didn't tape it because I didn't want the paper to warp. Like I said, it's a block. It usually doesn't warp as much in a block, but I just wanted a border because I, I figured, you know what? I'm going to do a little tree landscape just to test out these paints in this paper. So let's do that. So as I'm testing out this paper, I'm going to give you a little walkthrough of how I painted this. So a little tutorial on this little everything's little right now why um this <laughs> this little landscape painting oh i hate voiceovers guys you can usually tell when i'm doing a voiceover because it just sounds so weird and unnatural okay so i took some of the paints gray which i actually really like the shade of this paint gray um it's really really nice and i put it all over the background a little bit of that cobalt blue i think it was too just to get a light wash for this gray kind of sky and we're doing this tree landscape. I feel like I've done a tutorial on this before. Um, so the whole background is wet. Used my mop brush for that. It's just easier to get a large area wet with a larger mop brush. And we're doing some wet on wet trees. So it looks like they're misty in the background. Just doing a lot of vertical lines, not even horizontal lines for the branches, not many. Um, and then I wanted to blend it out. So I'm just taking my clean, dry brush and just blending out the bottom okay and then I go over a little bit more with some more paint and then I'm gonna do my second line of trees I think I did this on the on the wood piece didn't I with the I can't even keep track of my videos anymore guys doing a second layer here background still wet so far this paper is staying wet for a pretty decent amount of time I'm, I'm liking it so far there's quite um, texture to the paper like feeling but also the look of it so the texture really comes through and so that's a total preference if you really like that or not um, some people like a bit more like flat looking papers some people really like that watercolor texture um, so this definitely has that and 50% cotton I didn't know if it was gonna react well with water and blending but so far so good so I then took some paper towel to do like a couple clouds like I wanted it to be a gray sky but just have a couple clouds in there. So just lifted the color a bit and then used my heat tool to, to heat it up, to, to dry it because I wanted to speed up the process. Um, and I don't have the link to this exact heat tool, but you can find any craft heat tool on Amazon, Michaels, wherever, and it will work. And I actually love it. Some people use hair dryers too, and they work, but that's what I use. Okay, so now we are doing some more detailed trees on that second layer, just like the second one down. The one in the background, the furthest one up, I want mistier, but I wanted a bit more detail on that second line of trees. So I'm just going over with some darker paints gray pigment and and yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, so far I'm only using one color, um, but I'm kind of testing out the paper to see how it blends and all that stuff. I, I am about to do a floral piece as well using more colors so we can really test out the paint but so far I really like it um, I can honestly say and if you know me you know I'm like a Winsor & Newton fan and I used Winsor & Newton Cotman paints for a very long time and this is comparable I'm gonna say it's comparable and I actually have the Winsor & Newton Cotman pan set I think it's like a 48 pan set that I spent way too much money on um, and this set I think I like better let me tell you why I like the tin it is smaller I did not need 48 colors <laughs> with the Windsor nude but I got the big one so I like that this is a bit more compact I also like the color selection that was a big thing with me with um, picking out pan sets I usually go for tubes because I like to customize my palette this palette I'm very pleasantly surprised with the color selection I feel like it has every color that I need. I kind of wish it had a more pinky paint color in it, um, but the red matter, it has like a magenta kind of hue to it, so that's fine. Um, but the 24 set of Winsor & Newton does not have any pink and that always bothered me. So if anyone's listening from those companies, 
put a darn pink in your pan sets. That would be lovely. Even Paul Rubens, if you can get a, another little like pink in there, I, I'd like that too. Thanks. And I also like, which is a huge pet peeve with my Winsor & Newton Cotman pan set, these pans don't move around. They are securely in the tin. Like you can use them and they don't, they don't jiggle, which I really like because that really bugged me with my Cotman set, like really bugged me. And you couldn't adjust it because there was no like metal pieces to adjust. It was all plastic. So I'm going to be honest, I like this pan set better. So I would recommend it. So definitely check this out. I would, I believe this is comparable to that, but maybe even better quality. Um, I do have to do a bit more research on the light fastness of the Paul Rubens, but they are, I believe they are artist quality. Update from future Emma here. Um, I have seen a couple of videos and apparently these are light fast, which is great. So it probably has a bit better quality than the Windsor Newton Cotman that are student grade. That is all. So I really like them. If you're just starting out and you want like a bunch of colors, um, every color that you need, I do suggest, I, I recommend this. So as I'm doing this voiceover, when I painted this painting, this was my first impression, but as I'm doing the voiceover, like I just said, I've used the paints a couple times and I really like them. This may be my go-to pan set for now outside of my my tubes and I actually might if I'm traveling I think I'll use this one so there's that oh and the one other thing I wanted to mention about these paints is that these colors are non granulating which is a preference of mine I don't like granulation in my paintings if you don't know what that is um, it's kind of when there's like a bit more texture in the paint I don't I don't like that that is my preference I know a lot of people like it in their landscapes and all that I don't so that is a plus for me with these paints they're really nice and smooth washes, and that's about it. Okay, because I want to use a bit more range of colors, I decided to do a floral please, please, piece, because that's my jam. Um, wanted to try and use as many of the colors as I could. Also test out how, you know, the colors bleed on this paper. And I have to say, I really like it. I'm having fun. <laughs> that's my honest opinion um they're great and I'm just I'm I'm really happy with the selection of colors like I feel like I'm just I'm just repeating myself I don't know what more to say um they're great everything seems really nice quality and even the paper I was very surprised with the paper just because I usually work on 100% cotton paper um I haven't tried 50% and this is actually really nice so the color bleeds are wonderful the blends are seamless it's just a lot easier to work on so if you are able to find you know a 50% cotton paper or if you have access to this Paul Rubens paper um, on Amazon definitely pick it up because it is it is really nice and I believe it's not going to be as expensive as the 100% cotton paper which I've also tried of theirs and I really like but the 50% is really, really nice. So I'm just gonna leave you with this piece that I did of florals and kind of let you see how I did it and just enjoy the process. But my final thoughts on this paint, having used it for this video and after, I'm very impressed and I really like it. The colors activate really well and quickly. You can get a really nice amount of pigment on your brush and you can also water it down to get a really nice transparent look as well. Um, I think that's all I have to say about it. I think they're, they're great and they're good quality paints. So that's about it. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the painting.
Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.